In this video, we'll discuss wave function collapse of a superposition of states. So in the last several videos, we've been representing a wave function, which is a linear combination of various wave functions uh, using particle in a box mainly as the example. So let's assume that I have a wave function which is has a coefficient times eigenfunction 1, psi 1 of the Hamiltonian, plus square root 1 over 3 times eigenfunction psi 4, the fourth eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian operator. So my coefficients here, uh, as, I, as I see, if I square them and sum them, I have square root of 2 thirds squared is 2 thirds, square root of 1 third squared is 1 third, 2 thirds plus 1 third equals 1. So I have no, if my individual wave functions are normalized, my total wave function is normalized because the sum of my psi star size is going to be equal to 1. Because these coefficients tell me the probability of what I will measure for my energy or any individual property for which these are an eigenfunction whenever I do a measurement. So when I measure my energy, I'm not going to get the expectation value of my energy. I'm going to get one of the eigenfunctions of the operator for total energy, the Hamiltonian operator. So if I have my psi, my system is in this state, I measure the energy. What I'm going to get is a 2 thirds, two, square root of 2 thirds squared, a 2 thirds probability that I measure the energy of psi 1, and a 1 third, square root of 1 third squared, a 1 third probability of measuring the energy of the fourth eigenfunction of it. But what's, what's different about this is now if I measure it again, those probabilities are not the probabilities anymore. If I measure again and I got E1 the first time, there's a 100% chance that I measure E1 again. If I measure and I measure E4 the first time, there's a 100% chance that when I measure again, I get E4. So what's going on here? So this is called wave function collapse. My wave function is initially in a superposition of these different eigenfunctions of the operator I'm measuring. Whenever I do the measurement, the wave function has to make a choice. Are we going to go into eigenfunction 1 or eigenfunction 4? Or if I had more, whatever eigenfunction I do. It chooses the probabilities for which eigenfunction it goes into based off the coefficients of each of those functions. So the, the wave function is basically rolling the dice and there's a two-third chance it's now going to become psi 1 and a one-third chance it's now going to become psi 4. But once it's picked a state and it's measured that energy, it has collapsed into that state and now it is going to stay in that state for every measurement thereafter. We could keep measuring this state, we would keep getting E1. We could keep measuring this state, we would keep getting E4. Once we have collapsed the wave function, this state is destroyed, and now the wave function only exists in one of these eigenfunctions of that operator for the property that we've measured. So this interpretation of quantum mechanics is called the Copenhagen interpretation. That's probably the most common interpretation of quantum mechanics because this behavior is very strange. There's a lot of mystery related to the experiments around this, so it's not fully known exactly what the wave function is doing when this collapse happens. It's not quite known, not quite known uh, whether it is actually in both states simultaneously or whether it was in one of these states for the whole time. Um, there's a lot more data and experiments you can read on about that. There are books that have been written about that. But this is the basics of wave function collapse according to the Copenhagen interpretation that once we do a measurement, our wave function collapse into a single eigenstate and it will remain in that eigenstate for every measurement thereafter.